Hello. Hello, Eric. So this is Hello. Hi. This is Artemis from uh, Selling Addicts with our Selling Addicts member Eric Alden uh, from O Canada. Eric, you're going to uh, start an important race, the Transat Saint Bart uh, par la forêt, the B2B, uh, as we can see in uh, usually. So, why that race is so important for you right now? Can you explain us? Uh, well, this is the first qualification for the, the Vendée Globe next year. Uh, there are seven boats here right now, and we all hope to be the first seven to qualify and have that behind us so that we can move forward in our preparations for the Vendée Globe. That's great. And uh, what is the, the, the particular challenge on that race? Uh, what is it special for you? What is it unusual? Yeah, well, this will, I think, be my sixth or seventh transatlantic passage. And... Uh, there's actually seven boats here, and for six of us, this will be the first solo transatlantic for us. So uh, it's quite unusual that uh, there's so many rookies here, and it'll be interesting how that plays out uh, as we go across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting, interesting, but that's bringing also a particular challenge. Can you talk about, uh, about it a little bit? Can you explain to us why is it more challenging? Yeah, so we've always got to keep in mind that the, the goal is to, to finish this event, because if we finish, then we are qualified for the Monday Globe. Uh, so really, everyone makes sure we get to that finish line, uh, which means the result is a little bit less important. Obviously, we all want a, a good result as well. Uh, so it'll be a challenge to balance uh, how hard to push the boat and you know, get that good result and uh, make sure we don't break anything that could jeopardize our chances of qualifying for the Monday Globe. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have a particular uh, challenge on that because uh, you're, you're, you're not in con the, the, your boat is in good condition right now, but you're not, uh, you don't have all the, what you, ha what you wish to have uh, to be able to push the boat as much as you, as you wish, like the cell? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's right. I mean, we've got an older boat, and uh, you know, a very small budget, so uh, when things like sails get damaged, we can't uh, just fly in another one and replace it something. So we're about two spinnakers less uh, equipped than the other boats. And uh, so there'll definitely be some you know, wind speeds and angles where we really probably won't be very competitive. Um, we're fortunate, but that's kind of the case where we're at. Uh, and still, with our goal of finishing this race, then that is kind of less of a concern. It's just more of a, a frustration. Um, our boat is kind of as the best prepared we can be. There's not much else we can do to it at this point, uh, you know, within the time scale and the budget that we have. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been working really hard the past month since uh, retiring from the, the Teja Bay race. And uh, the boat is really as ready as it's ever been. Yeah. You, you had particularly uh, challenging condition for the last TGV. Uh, first of all, you had a really bad weather to get to the place it was uh, really hard uh, because it, first of all you took a long time you had to make a long uh, cross to be able to go because it was just uh, condition and uh, you couldn't go straight so it was already really demanding on the boat and on the skippers also on board and you arrive, I think, like 48 hours or three days just before. So I, w I have a lot of respect for uh, our guys who manage that because to cross the ocean like that in bad condition, to arrive there on the rush, get ready, he was already tired from the, the, the crossing the ocean. And to start on a race, it's uh, really uh, something really... Uh, admirable, I'm sorry for my English, but <laughs> admirable that you did, you know, and uh, we're really proud of you uh, because you did that uh, challenge. And uh, now you had uh, uh, some uh, problem uh, on the TGV. Can you talk to us about it? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the TGV didn't turn out as well as we had hoped. Um, you know, we're already pretty pressed on time getting there, like you mentioned. We were uh, delayed by a hurricane in, in the States. Uh, and delayed our transat passage. Um, but we got to the start of the TGV. Uh, you know, that was a major milestone for me and my team to, to be there on that start line. Um, we made it through most of the way of the storm uh, during the start, first few days. 
uh, but unfortunately we ripped out our mast track uh, at the second reef point and we tried but we didn't have the equipment to fix that at sea so unfortunately we had to abandon from the TGV race and pull into Acarina in Spain to uh, effect repairs. Actually, the same place Hugo Boss came into uh, in a much worse state. Yes. So it was a, a tough transit for a lot of boats. Yes. So, so uh, in another way, that also gave you more time to get ready for that uh, qualification right now that you're doing. So you all set. Yeah. You're gonna have also challenge to manage. Uh, it's gonna be the first time to manage the sleep because you're in solo. That's gonna be also a good preparation to manage it on the longest period uh, because it's really demanding for the skippers uh, to be in solo condition on a long run. Uh, how did you manage that? Did you start to get ready a little bit about it, or how did you plan to manage it? Yeah, uh, a lot of it actually will be. Kind of learning as we go. Uh, well, I guess as I go, because I'll be alone this time. Uh, Morgan and I did a, a transatlantic passage to get here from the Canary Islands, uh, double-handed, and really Morgan was there to observe and uh, kind of take notes. But uh, really, I was kind of in solo mode, doing all the maneuvers solo, getting into the sleep, gaining trust in the autopilots and alarm systems on board. Uh, so we've done quite a bit of preparation there. Um, but really, it won't be until I'm out there on my own that I'll really be experiencing things and learning. And that's really what this is all about, Make, learning these lessons now. So when it comes to Vendée Globe, I'll be much more ready. Yeah. And anyway, I imagine it uh, doesn't matter how ready you are. You have to make good preparation. But every race are different with different challenge and, and different condition that you cannot expect in advance. So... Uh, that, that, there's a lot of things that you can just manage when you are there already, you know. So I would like also, uh, you talk about us, about the condition, the meteorology condition uh, for the race right now, because on the Transat Jacques Verbe, it was really bad uh, meteorologic condition for many days at the start. How is it this time? How is it appear? I think you're a meteorologist, so you can talk to us a lot about it. Yeah, I've definitely been following the weather over the last uh, several days. Uh, it looks like the start should be fairly breezy. The trade winds will be quite strong. So we'll have probably about 25 knots, uh, almost on the nose. So we'll be kind of beating up wind or tight reaching for the first couple of days to head north uh, until we kind of get north of the Azores High. There could be a light patch for a day or two uh, getting north. And then we should have pretty strong westerlies all the way across to France. So. Right now, it's looking like it should be a fairly quick passage, uh, probably about 12 days, 12, 13 days to get across. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of uh, sailors will understand what you're saying, but for beginner sailors like, like me, can you explain to us, is it uh, the best condition or is it more difficult condition or uh, how it's going? Uh, I think these are pretty good conditions for us. I mean... I don't mean just for me, but something before these boats. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it'll be made for a pretty quick passage. Um, upwind, it's not as fun. The boat will be a bit rough and a bit wet for a few days, especially with being so hot. You know, you'll be stuck down below and it'll get pretty warm. Um, but, uh, you know, it'll really get fun once you get north and able to turn right and head towards France. And then 35, 40 knots from wind from behind, those are kind of ideal conditions. You've... Uh, you shorten sail a little bit. You don't have your big, big light air sails up anymore, uh, but you've got speeds in the 20 knots for almost the whole way. So that's great. That's good condition. I'm happy for you. Um, your team, we're losing you. We, more we go, uh, can you just fix the camera? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just see the up of your head right now. Uh, you got it. Yeah, it's better. Sure. Yes. Okay, we see you better. We see more and more the sky and less and less you. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's pretty windy out here. I'm trying to find the Wi-Fi in the right spot. That's fine. Uh, I would like it because uh, for for me it's important because you are Canadian. You are the only one who participate on the Transat Jacques Vabre, the only one who participate on the Transat B2B right now, and the, the, the only Canadian team also who is uh, uh, planning to go on the next Vendée Globe. I am Canadian, but you're also a member of uh, Selling Addicts, and we're really proud of it. Uh, you have a special project about uh, 
the, the skippers, the Canadian skippers, uh, you have a, a special mission that you give yourself, and I would like you to talk about it a little bit to uh, our members so they are able to know a little bit why it's so important and what you are doing. Yeah, I mean, my personal goal over the next year is to be able to be the first Canadian to uh, have completed the, the Vendée Globe race. Um, but it's not just about me, you know, we're trying to get uh, the sport of offshore sailing uh, more recognized in Canada, more people involved in it. And, uh, you know, my team, it's not just me here. We've got uh, three other Canadians here helping me out, getting us ready. Uh, Daniel and Joel are from Canada, you know, volunteering their time, just like we all are to, to make this happen. So, you know, we're looking and involved in our program. Uh, you know, lending us a hand and also giving them a chance to experience offshore sailing uh, at this level. It's just, uh, it's my passion. I want to share it with as many Canadians as I can. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice mission and it's reached mine also, you know. You know, I'm passionate about sailor community and how it's important for me. And that's what I'm trying to do with selling ads. It's, it started in French and now it's in English also and I'm really proud of it. And I'm really proud also to be able to to uh, show what you're doing, you know, and I'm sure you're going to inspire inspire a lot of uh, young skippers who are in Canada and also in other country, you know. It's not because we're from a country where it's less a tradition to offshore sailing that we cannot make it, you know. It's a little bit more challenging for sponsoring, but anyway, in Europe, it's the same now. They have, they have also challenge uh, about sponsoring. Uh, but more and more people going to get involved in it. I think more we're going to be able to uh, uh, get uh, people interested uh, and to see what is the potential of sponsoring uh, on the big offshore race because it's also an international visibility for the sponsor. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, we're here in St. Bart's and we just had a, a bunch of school kids come down and check out the boats and I gave a, a class a tour of Rho Canada and I was told that every child here on the island go to uh, sail training as part of their school. So wow. that's just uh, amazing. Just, uh, you know, wish we had more opportunities like that in Canada. So. Of course, yes, I do too. So there's also a few other races that you're gonna do before the Vendée Globe. Uh, can you talk, uh, this one finished like in, a, you live in two days. Uh, we are the four now, it's gonna live on the 6th, December 6th. So you're gonna be back for Christmas. <laughs> uh, well, actually I've got, uh, got to be quick because I got a flight down to Australia for the Sydney Hobart race on the 22nd so wow. uh, not a lot of time so don't want to dawdle too long in this race okay. and make sure I get down to, to Sydney in time for that because obviously Sydney Hobart's a fantastic race and looking forward to spending Christmas in Australia and then I'll be back in in France with the boat uh, on January 1st my birthday and uh, we'll go from there getting the boat ready for next season's races. You don't stop. You're full of energy. It's incredible. Since I know you, you're always from one race to another one. You don't have any break behind. Wow, I'm really impressed. I thought I move a lot, but you move more than me. <laughs> you probably have more fun too. So we won't be able uh, to have news from you uh, during the race. Like we cannot make interview during the race, but we're going to be able to uh, follow you through the email you send us and we're going to publish about you. And it's also going to be on your uh, uh, Facebook page. You're going to tweet on your Twitter account. And we're able to follow you in real also by the tracking system on your website. Yeah, that's correct. Tracking will be uh, updated probably hourly. Uh, I'll be sending out lots of tweets uh, on my personal account, and that will get sent out to Ocean Racers, our Twitter account as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that will go through Facebook and uh, I'll be sending out email updates a, a little more in depth uh, as we go. Yeah, and we're going to publish about it too uh, on Selling Addict page and Les Mardi de Voile Coursier Actualité. So uh, I would like uh, we talk again, we, we make another interview after the race. So we're going to make uh, a point about it. So where you are about the qualification on the Val de Globe and what's happened. And I wish you the best condition, really good wins. And take care of you huh? because you're alone. I always worry when my members are on the race alone like that. You know, it's always a lot of things can happen. And uh, I just wait uh, to have news from you. And uh, we're going to follow you. Thank you very much, Eric. Thanks a lot. Have a Talk good, to you when I get back. Have a good race. Bye-bye. Right.
Đấy. 